Tonight, America is in need of healing, healing the soul of America, starting with civility and learning how to break bread together. America's Hope starts now. From the NTD Global Headquarters in New York, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. And wherever you are, we do hope that you're safe, that you're well, taking care of yourself and your family, because you matter. And I mean that. You matter so much that many people are writing books to inspire you and to help you and to encourage you and to motivate you to understand that the family of America, the fabric of America, is in need of repair. We have to redeem the soul of America by providing it with faith, hope, and love. So tonight we're gonna to talk to the author of the book, Soul of Civility, and her name is Alexandra Hudson. She'll be joining us. And then we'll talk about the need to break bread together, finding that common ground at that table of brotherhood for a good meal of peace and tranquility. We'll talk to a man who's doing that in America and around the world. His name is Adam Coleman. Let's get started. And welcome back to America's Hope. I'm here at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, and I'm joined now by Alexandra Hudson. And you're doing some great things that I think is a galvanizing a spirit in America. Uh, and it's not only through what you're talking about, but what you've also written about in your book, The Soul of Civility. Oh my gosh, when I read the title, right there I wanted to know more about you and why you chose to write the book and chose that particular title. Thank you, Kelly. I, I, I lived and worked in Washington, D.C. in a very divided time in our world, in our nation's capital, and in, in our country. And um, I worked there from 2017 to 2018. And I was very dispirited and despondent. I, I remember these, the, I saw these two extremes when I was in government. On one hand, there was a, a, a contingent of people who were bellicose and aggressive and hostile. And then there was another contingent that was quite polished and poised, but ruthless and cruel. These are the people who would smile and flatter at you one moment and then stab you in the back the next. And I realized that both these modes, they kind of divine, define uh, the extremes in our public life right now as well. And while they seem like polar opposites, they're actually very similar. Both the extreme hostility and the extreme kind of saccharine polish and politeness, they insufficiently appreciate the gift of being human. They, they, they fail to respect the dignity and personhood of the other. And I realized that politeness itself wasn't enough to uh, heal our deep differences. We needed something, something else. We needed civility, which is the art of human flourishing, the bare minimum of respect that we are owed and owe to others by virtue of our shared humanity. And, and civility, crucially, is different from mere politeness. It requires telling hard truths sometimes, respecting someone enough to engage in robust debate. And that's the mode of, of conduct we need more right now. Not the uh, virtue signaling, not the pretense of, of of respect and niceness we need people who actually we want we want to exchange the the foe for the real you know what you defined right there is the epitome of what we see in washington and in our political con construct and discourse of today and it's time that we learn to agree to disagree but still live in harmony yes is that achievable I think it is. You know, as long as we've been around as a species, we've been trying to do this thing called life together with others. And as long as we've been around, it's been hard to do that. You know, it's, it's really easy to look around us and feel like we're living in a very vicious and divided moment. And especially amidst our 24-24 presidential election cycle and feel like our moment is the most divided. And yet, if you look across human history, across time and place, you, you see a pattern, as I did when I was writing my book, that every era actually tends to feel like theirs is the most uncivil, that they're on the precipice of the collapse of civilization. And that's really humbling and comforting as well. And so this is a timeless problem. And I really do zoom out from America. It's not just a modern Western 
democratic American problem. This is a timeless human problem that gets to the core of who we are. We are profoundly social as a species. We we become fully human in relationship with others, and yet morally and biologically, we're driven to meet our own needs before others, and that can often be intention with with this joint project of, of peaceful coexistence with others. And the, and the challenge that we have today, the challenge that we've always had as a species, is how do we rise above that aspect of ourselves that wants to um, uh, threaten the the, the 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 social project by monomaniacally following our self our self interest, and instead, uh, voluntarily considering the needs and well being of our fellow citizens alongside of ourselves. Well, there's a there's a moral clarity in what you just stated, though, and that is that we've got to be concerned for others, to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, mm -hmm. and to reach out and help someone up as opposed to being nice and smiley and behind their back putting them down or even bellicose and, and disrupting everybody's lives by our our belligerent rhetoric so i completely agree and my book is is is, is intended to be a handbook for individual citizens individual readers for how they can be empowered to be a part of the solution to our deep divisions our crisis of alienation and polarization in there every day that this isn't this is so important we can't abdicate this this responsibility to our public leaders to our even our local leaders this is our responsibility in a democracy the citizen is prior to the regime this is our duty to to embody the ideals of of civility of citizenship and um, you know I, I learned this firsthand that we have way more power to be a part of the solution than many of us realize when I was in DC I came home from from work one day and said to my husband I'm done with DC I'm done with toxic politics let's move to Indiana I said and Indiana is where my husband's from originally we had talked about moving there one day he said great sounds good we'll move to Indiana no take backs and that was six years ago and a few months later we we moved to Indiana and one of my first friends in Indiana she came up to me up to me after church one day and she said hi I'm Joanna Taft would you like to porch with us sometime. I had never heard the word porch used okay. as a verb before, but I was curious. We didn't know many people. We went to her home that afternoon and I realized that Joanna was staging a quiet, subversive citizen led revolution against our atomized and alienated and divided status quo right from her front porch. She had invited people to her home that day across race, class, geography, even political preference to not have these curated conversations across difference, just to inhabit a shared space, to to remind us that we have far more in common as as human beings and as fellow citizens than that which divides us. And that was revolutionary. And I, as I was writing this book, I traveled across the country and realized that people are doing the same thing with front porches and without. They're, they're saying, I, I can't control what's happening in Washington. I can't control who's going to be in the White House this fall or in the new year, but I can control myself. And I'm going to choose to make my community better and more beautiful from right where I am. I love that. You know why I love that? Because the greatness of America or any nation starts in the homes of its That's people. Right. And, and if heart. home yeah. is where the heart is, what's in your heart? Yes. And that's part of the solution. That's exactly right. Finding out as on the porch, or in the den, or in the living room, talking to people about what's in their heart. And this is endlessly vexing to many a well-intended public leader and policymaker who they realize that polarization and hyper-partisanship and growing political violence is threatening our democracy and destabilizing our, our peace, peace, peaceful and flourishing um, society. And yet, they're very, very limited in what they can do to be a part of the solution. This is a that 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 matters of the heart lay beyond government reach. Voluntarily choosing to invite someone into your home, into your life, like Joanna did with us. You can't mandate that. You can't. That's no. There's no. That's beyond the realm of policy and 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 law. Um, but it's so essential. It's so important. Which is why I wrote my book not for public leaders. Although if you know one, buy it for them. It's on sale for two ninety nine at Amazon right now. Uh, the Kindle version is. But I wrote it for citizens. I wrote it not for the, you know, halls of power and intelligentsia. I wrote it for everyday Americans to empower them to be a part of this 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 civility revolution right from where they are. <laughs>